Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about radio waves and the ionosphere. The ionosphere is one of the higher up layers of the Earth's atmosphere. We get pretty interesting electrical effects occurring in the ionosphere because it's a part of the atmosphere that's electrically conductive. But we don't need to know too much about that for now because we're mainly talking about how radio waves interact with it. Now soon after radio waves were discovered, uh, scientists discovered that we could bounce radio waves off the sky. It turns out that it's the Earth's ionosphere that is acting like a mirror for these radio waves. The ionosphere is a region of ionized air that starts at about 50 kilometers above the ground. So what's ionized air? Well, it's air that has been exposed to an environment that makes it separate its atomic nuclei and its electrons. So it means that instead of getting molecules of oxygen gas, we get oxygen ions and electrons. So instead of having neutral molecules floating about, we have charged ions and electrons. This is what makes the ionosphere electrically conductive. It's got moving charges and not just neutral molecules. But that's not really addressing its effect on radio waves. For radio waves, as I said, it behaves a little like a mirror. From our viewpoint on Earth, it curves inward, so it behaves like a concave mirror. The amount of reflection that we get depends on the frequency of the wave. This means that not all radio waves are able to reflect from the ionosphere like this. Low frequency waves, that is AM radio, are able to reflect. If we were to broadcast FM radio up to the atmosphere, instead of being reflected, it would just pass straight through, as we can see from this top arrow. So high frequency waves like FM radio, or the radio waves that we use to broadcast television, do not in fact get bounced off by the ionosphere, they just go straight through. But of course this is very useful if we ever need to send messages to satellites or to astronauts. Now Australian AM radio broadcasts on frequencies of between about 500 kilohertz to almost 2000 kilohertz. So this is the band of frequencies, so called, that you can tune an AM radio to. If you've ever seen an AM radio, you'll know that the numbers on it tend to be from about 570 to about 1600 or 1700. So these correspond to the frequency of radio wave that you're tuning the radio to receive. On particular frequencies, we'll get particular radio stations broadcasting. And so if the radio is set up to receive that frequency, that's the sort of broadcast that it will receive. So frequencies between about 1.5,000 to 2,000 kilohertz, that is 1.5 to 2 megahertz, are called shortwave radio. And so it's possible to have shortwave radio receivers and shortwave radio transmitters. Because they bounce off the ionosphere, they can be sent very long distances and in fact can be used to transmit internationally. That means that we can send a shortwave radio signal to a different country, even if it's a long distance away. Other radio waves, of course, do not reflect from the atmosphere or the ionosphere. They'll go all the way out into space. Now, in the past, we couldn't use these radio waves for international communication. We could only use them uh, in a line of sight way. You had to be able to see the receiver that you were transmitting to. Today, because we have objects in orbit, we have a use for these radio waves, transmitting messages to up there. So there are other ways today of broadcasting signals that are not in the shortwave radio or the AM radio bands. So in fact, we can send messages using these radio waves without having line of sight to the receiver. So how do we go about doing that? Well, the answer is satellites. Radio waves of different frequencies can be broadcast to satellites. The satellites can receive them and then broadcast the radio wave again down to the ground to a different location. So it means that instead of bouncing a message off the ionosphere, we're effectively bouncing a message off a satellite, right? So that even though the two stations don't have line of sight to each other, the satellite is able to transmit the radio wave to a receiving station or to a receiving satellite dish. Of course, in today's modern society, there are more ways to broadcast than just this, right? 
And most radio stations these days have a different way of sending their broadcasts. As well as using radio waves, they can use the internet. And in fact, many radio stations will have a little applet or application on their site that you can use to listen to their radio through the internet.